before I show you the assembly of a TC-22. We're going to take one, set it on the table, put it all together so you see all the parts of it, how it works, okay? But before I show you that, I'd like to ask you a question. Can you change your world? Can you change the world around you? Okay, that's the question. We at Tenonizer, we are an itty bitty company in a little bitty state in the middle of the United States. It's kind of like a fly speck on the face of the whole planet. Or just a little spot. But this is the biggest machine that we make, okay? We've got several of these out there or like this one, okay? The largest log furniture manufacturing companies in the world use equipment made right here in this little shop. And I know I'm talking to people, do-it-yourselfers. <laughs> Our viewers are all over the planet, do-it-yourself guys. It's a wonderful bunch to be associated with. You can change your world and the world around you. And I would love to have a part of that, showing you how to do some stuff that we've done. You know, it's an adventure. We work a lot with technology. Technology is something that is copyable. You can copy it. Technology, you can copy it. An idea that you can repeat the same process and get the same result. Whether it's log handrail, whether it's a log truss, whether it's a saddle cut chair. Technology, it's copyable. The things that I've done, you do it yourself, guys. I know you can do it too. And it'll be easier. <laughs> easier for you. You can learn from the mistakes that I made. You won't have to make the same mistakes. Because I've made a few of them. I've got a pile out back of stuff that's... Piles of stuff. Try this, it didn't work. Try that and it didn't work. Try something else. And, oh, and that one worked. Then we're going to stick with that but technology, because you can copy it and do it over again and get the same results like this. This is, this cut is 35 seconds. Spot on, perfect. You can make a thousand of them on this machine and they're all gonna be exactly the same. Even as not just a straight tenon, which can do that, it's possible to set them up easy, really. So it cuts taper, that is from here to here, it gets maybe 30 thousands wider here, changing 10 thousands per inch, 10 thousands, 20 thousands, 30 thousands, 30 thousands wider here than it is here. Makes assembly of stuff so nice, smooth, easy. Glue joints every time. If you can't glue something together for furniture, you got nothing. You have to have the ability to glue it together. It has to make it strong so it's indestructible so it lasts long and people pay a lot of money for it because <laughs> it takes money to make all this work we want you to make money on it make something build stuff there's lots of people out there that need stuff done furniture and then for your own house make stuff for your own house for your own home for your own farm of course that's what you do you don't need me to tell you that because you're doing that already I get to a spot and I go, Daddy, help! How do we do this? How do I do this? I don't know what to do. I need you to show me, help. Send me somebody who can tell me how to do this or just show me. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, wake up in the morning and there's the answer. And go, thank you. This tenon cutter, it works like a, a radial saw, radial arm saw over the top of a lathe, okay? a radial arm saw over the top of the lathe. The biggest challenge in it is getting it, you know how a radial arm saw wants to grab into something, and all of the tenon cutting needs to be done so it's cutting with the grain. And then the challenge is so that saw doesn't jam, but there's an easy way through it to make it work. It's in this machine. We hope to show you how that works so you can actually make one out of a radial arm saw. Really simple, done it. It's nice. There's things that we've been working on for several years in a hope that we would be able to get back to things that I really like to do. <laughs> like that. 
what I'm doing right now. As crazy as that seems, experimenting on stuff, making things, it's kind of like a giant show and tell and YouTube is given a tremendous platform to work from. They actually encourage to do the give a thumbs up, give a like. That's a help to me, to the channel, to putting more stuff out there. Push the button and subscribe. They encourage that. They say that's a good thing to say that. You know, when we were on PBS, a call to action was an absolute no, 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 you can't do that. It made it really tough. Because you know what? It takes money in the pocket to make all this stuff work. So, is that enough yammering? We can go in the other room and put something together. So the first step in cutting a tenon with this technology is you take the piece of wood that's going to have the tenon cut on it and it could be crooked, it could be weird looking, doesn't make any difference, it's got knobs on it or stuff. You go to the end and you put a little half inch diameter hole just a half of an inch deep in the end, okay? Then you go, that's going to be the middle of the tenon. And go to the other end, and do the same thing. Okay, easy. That's going to be the middle of the tenon. And once the two tenons are cut, the tenon on this end is going to be directly in line with the tenon on this end. Very important. And you're going to end up with a glue joint. I'm going to drill a half inch hole.
First on one end, then on the other. Now the hole that's been drilled is just like it goes right straight through from one end to the other. Line board is the correct term. So, oh, some things that make this work. Very important. This drill bit that you put the access shaft hole in with. Make sure it's very sharp. Cut a nice clean cut with the hole, with a drill bit. Make sure it's very sharp. You might have to get a new one. If that bit gets dull, it'll hit a knot and deviate to the side. Keep it nice and sharp. In here I'm using one of them big fat carbide blades. It was maxing out the horsepower of this little table saw. This one's just a horse and a half. But it is a nine inch diameter cutter. Okay, very important. The height of this little access shaft off the table. On this one, the access shaft is directly in line with the pivot point. All right, where the, where the bearing is. This is precisely in line with that. This one, with the bearing, the bearing is the center of it, three and three quarters off the tabletop. If you go higher than that with the bearing, or the center of the pivot point, actually the center of the access shaft, if you go higher than that, then you won't be able to get a full range of motion and cut a little tenons. It's easier to cut a bigger one because you just lower the blade but you have to get the blade high enough to cut a small tenon. So don't run that pivot point <laughs> higher than the three and three quarters to the center of the axis shaft, okay? Very important. Now, what do we want to do? We want to give you ability. I am not out to sell machinery, okay? I don't want to have employees anymore. That has enough of a challenge. I just as soon have fun, make videos to put on YouTube. I think that's fun. And maybe I'm a little crazy, but I like doing this part of it, making stuff, doing stuff, filming it, and putting it on YouTube. Put a like on there, that really helps. Or subscribe, that really helps. They say that's a call to action, and I'm supposed to do that. That's what they encourage me to do. Say. Thumbs up, subscribe, okay? But I like doing this more than I like welding machinery. I'd rather tell you how 
We found that it works. I think that's fun. It's like show and tell in kindergarten. What a hoot. So, I want to show you how to do this part of it so we can do other stuff making things. You know, just making stuff, having fun.